This is Kurt Heisinger, accounting professor at Sierra College and author of Managerial Accounting. This video describes how to create the sales budget and the production budget in a company that produces products. And these are the first two budgets typically of the master budget. So we're going to talk about the starting point for the master budget. I have several other videos that describe the other budgets that are part of the master budget. So we're going to start with the sales budget here and also talk about the production budget here. The sales budget is typically the starting point for setting up the master budget and it's an estimate of the units of product that we as an organization expect to sell times the sales price per unit. And it typically is the most important budget because it drives all of the other budgets. So that includes driving the production budgets, which uh, are comprised of direct materials, direct labor, and, and manufacturing overhead. It also drives the selling and administrative budget, the capital expenditures budget, the cash budget. So the sales budget is the uh, perhaps the most important budget to get right because it drives the other budgets. This slide provides some examples of where we might get the information that we need to put together the sales budget. And it really does vary by company, but this is this provides some examples. We, most companies will start with their sales staff because the sales staff has knowledge of what we would expect to sell this coming year. We would also typically look at market research. What's happening within our industry? Do we see sales going up? Do we see sales going down within our industry? We should factor that into the sales budget as well. We uh, might perhaps talk to a, an economist to find out what is happening in the overall economy, not just with our industry, but what's happening with the economy, not just within our own country, but worldwide, if we sell worldwide. So lots of different factors will go into establishing the sales budget. What you see here is an example of a sales budget for a company called Jerry's Ice Cream. So let's take a look at this. Let's assume that this is a company that produces ice cream. You'll notice that one unit of product is the same as one gallon of product. So we talk about this, this in units, but let's assume that we're talking about gallons of ice cream. The budget that you see here is a quarterly budget. We could put together a monthly budget. It just so, so happens that this example is a quarterly example. So each period you see here represents three months. This right here is the first quarter. Uh, let's if if uh, we're assuming here that the the fiscal year is the same as the calendar year, so the first quarter would be from January first through March thirty first. So that's what we mean by the first quarter, three months, and then the second quarter would be April first through June thirtieth, and so on. So you see the second quarter of information here, and the third quarter, and the fourth quarter, and then the last column that you see here is a collection of of all four quarters. So it represents the sales budget for the year. The first line that you see here is the number of units that we expect to sell. So in the first quarter, we expect to sell 40,000 units. Second quarter, we expect to sell 48,000 units and right on down the line. And for the year collectively, if you add up this line, we expect to sell 200,000 units. The second line gives us what we expect our sales price to be. And here, we expect our sales price per unit to be $6. We talked to our sales personnel, remember the, the previous slide where we get that information, but this is our estimate and it really represents what we expect the average sales price per unit to be throughout the year. The third line calculates then the sales revenue for each quarter by taking the number of units, and so in this first example it would be 40,000, and multiplying it by the sales price per unit. So for the first quarter we expect to see sales revenue of $240,000. The, the far right column then represents what we expect our sales revenue to be for the year. It's just adding up the first, second, third, and fourth quarters. And uh, that number is $1.2 million. So this is what a typical sales budget would look like. Next, we're going to look at a production budget and how to put a production budget together. Now that we have the sales budget, we have to figure out from that sales bu budget how much to produce. So the sales budget provides us an estimate of the units that we expect to produce, and in this case, each quarter. It's not going to be the same as the sales budget because we would expect to have some uh, desired ending finished goods inventory, and we would therefore expect to have some beginning finished goods inventory at the beginning of the next quarter. So if we're going to have desired ending finished goods inventory, we don't produce exactly what we need in the way of sales. We would actually factor in our desired ending finished goods inventory and then we would take away the beginning finished goods inventory in that same period. I'm going to show you how to do that in the next schedule. 
This is an example of a production budget for Jerry's ice cream. So the same example that we use for the sales budget. Now we're going to continue on and use this for the production budget. And when you look at my other videos that have been created for the different uh, operating budgets that most manufacturing companies create, you're going to see Jerry's ice cream. They all tie together. So the numbers will be consistent throughout all of those videos related to those various operating budgets. So here we see the Jerry's ice cream production budget. You see that in the heading for the year ending December 31. And this is similar to the sales budget in that it's set up quarterly. So we've got the first quarter, January 1st through March 31st, the second quarter, April 1st through June 30th, and so on. So three months for each quarter. And then the last column here represents information for the year. You'll notice here that we start with sales in units, and that comes right from the sales budget. So if you want to go back to the sales budget, that's presented in this lecture, go back and take a look at it. You'll see these numbers, and then there are a number of units, in the sales budget by quarter and for the year. What we are intending to do here then in this budget is to figure out, uh, well, these are the, this is the sales that we expect to have, but this is to figure out what do we expect to produce based on the sales that you see from the sales budget. So I'll skip right to the bottom line. You'll notice that the very bottom of this shows us how many units we need to produce. And it's different than the sales budget. The reason it's different is because we have to add the uh, desired ending finished goods inventory to our expected sales. And I'll talk about where that comes from in just a second. Uh, and in, in the first quarter, that happens to be 4,800 units. And then there's a subtotal here, which is simply taking sales plus our desired ending finished goods inventory. But then we need to deduct our beginning finished goods inventory, because if we have ending finished goods inventory, we also have beginning finished goods inventory. And that happens to be 4,000 units here. So we're going to deduct that. And so if you take our 40,000 in sales, add to it our desired ending finished goods inventory, subtract from it our beginning finished goods inventory, that will tell us what we need to produce in the first quarter. There's a lot of information in this slide, so I recommend that you pause it and take a look at the footnotes that are here because I'll go through some of it, but it's really important that you read through this to see where all of this information comes from. We've already talked about the fact that we start with the sales budget. We've talked about having to add the desired ending finished goods inventory and then subtract the beginning finished goods inventory. Now I want to talk about where this information comes from. So we're going to look at the second footnote down here, this footnote right here, and you'll see that the desired ending inventory is 10% of next quarter sales. That is a given. That, that I'm going to give that to you here. We'd have to look at that for the company that we're working on. That information would be given. So um, this is not the same. What I'm trying to say is not the same for every single company. So for this company, let's assume that our ending finished goods inventory is going to be 10% of next quarter sales. So if you look at this 4,800 that is right here as desired ending inventory, I'm giving you where that comes from, right down here. The 4,800 equals 10% of the next quarter's sales. So 10% of 48,000 is 4,800, and that then is our desired finished ending finished goods inventory for the first quarter. That then becomes, you see the arrow here, that then becomes the beginning inventory for the next quarter. If it's there at the end of the first quarter, it's there at the beginning of the second quarter. So that carries over. That's why you see all of these arrows here, because that carries over as beginning inventory to the next quarter. And then the 4,000 that you see in the first quarter, that 4,000 is uh, described where that comes from. This is going to get uh, look like a roadmap here, but that 4,000, that's to explain down here. That uh, 4,000 is coming from uh, the previous ending, desired ending finished goods inventory. And that previous quarter's desired ending finished goods inventory is equal to 10% of the first quarter's expected sales. That is right up here. Last line I'm going to draw here. Uh, but that's right up at the top. So that uh, 40,000 times 10% gives us the 4,000 units of uh, of, of uh, beginning finished goods inventory for the first quarter. And that's one of the problem areas. Students often wonder where that number comes from. So that's why I wanted to make sure I described that. Take a, a close look at this third footnote and you'll see where that first quarter beginning finished goods inventory comes from. 
Okay, one last thing I want to talk about here, and that is, where does this uh, year, yearly information come from? Where does that far right column information come from? So let's go through it piece by piece because it's not as simple as it might seem. The first line, 200,000 uh, units, that comes from just adding up the first quarter plus the second quarter plus the third and fourth quarter's uh, sales, expected sales. So that's fairly straightforward. This uh, 4,400 that is the um, uh, desired ending finished goods inventory for the year, that comes straight from the fourth quarter. So the way to think about that is um, right at December 31st, what do we want to see in our finished goods inventory? So it's not a collection of every quarter. It's just at the end of the fourth quarter, that's also, because it's December 31st, it's also the end of the year. So we just simply take that 4,400 and we're going to carry it over to the year. Then uh, the, the, the next uh, line item, total finished goods inventory needed, is just simply going to be the 200,000 units plus the 4,400 units. That's where that two, uh, 204,400 comes from. And then finally, the beginning inventory, that 4,000 that you see right here, that's the inventory at the beginning of the year. So it's also the beginning inventory uh, for the first quarter. So that just comes, you'll see the arrow that comes, I'm not going to draw another arrow, this is starting to get a little bit messy, so that 4,000 just simply comes from the first quarter. So look in the first quarter column and you're going to see that same exact number, we're just going to carry it over. Don't add them all up, all across the quarters, just take that 4,000 and bring it all the way over. And then finally to get to this uh, units to be produced for the year, we're going to take the 204,400 and subtract the 4,000 beginning finished goods inventory and what we truly need to produce, since we already started with 4,000, what we truly need to produce then for the year is 200,400 units.